Okay, in this video, I wanted to do a mechanics problem that involved an inclined plane. This problem reads a 300 Newton block is sitting still on a frictionless inclined plane at an angle of 60 degrees from the horizontal. So I'll just add that to our diagram here. We are asked in part A, what is the magnitude of the normal force? So Fn between the ramp and the block. With inclined plane problems, as well as most mechanics problems, really, I start by drawing a free body diagram. I'm first going to add the force due to gravity, which is still straight down. Don't be fooled by the inclined plane. Gravity always pulls toward the center of the Earth or straight down here on Earth's surface. We have a normal force. The normal force is that um, ramp supporting the block. The normal force is always going to be perpendicular to the surface. I'm also going to add this elastic force or spring force. I'll call it elastic. And that's going to be the spring that's holding that block up. Notice that I've drawn the normal force 90 degrees to the surface and the elastic force right along that spring itself. I'm also going to want to add the 60 degree angle into my free body diagram. And the trick here is that when you extend the normal force, the angle between that extension and the force due to gravity is always that angle of your ramp. There's some geometry that can prove that, but honestly, I just remember that trick. So we're being asked the magnitude of the normal force. So I'm going to turn my axes instead of being up, down, right, left. I'm going to say that this way is the up y and the down y direction. And this way along the ramp is the x direction. Meaning the parts that are in the y direction are the normal force, as well as this component of the force due to gravity. So I'm gonna write out my sum of the forces in the y direction, the normal force up, and part of the force due to gravity, I'm gonna to have to figure out what that part is. So I'll make sure to draw those components in. Here's my right angle. And I'm looking for this blue highlighted side right there. I'm noticing that this highlighted sign would be the cosine of 60 degrees. If you're not quite sure where I came up with that, let me show you my work. If I want to find this side right here, if I do cosine of 60 degrees, I'm looking at the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay, so coming back down here to my equation, the net force in the y direction is normal minus Fg cosine 60, and Newton's second law says the net force equals ma. In this case, though, I know that the block is just sitting there, so my acceleration goes to zero. This equation then becomes Fn minus Fg cosine 60 degrees equals zero. Remember, we're trying to solve for Fn, and we are given the weight, 300 newtons Fg. So we can solve for Fn. Fn comes out to be 150 newtons. In part B, we're asked to find the magnitude of the spring or the elastic force. So this is going to require us looking at the y direction, or sorry, the x direction. I see the elastic force up the ramp, and I see a component of the gravitational force down the ramp. Let's write the sum of the forces in the x direction. We have the elastic force up the ramp minus Fg sine 60 degrees down the ramp. If you're confused where that sine 60 degrees comes from, sine 60 degrees, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. 
and Newton's second law says I can set that equal to ma. Again, acceleration is zero because we are at rest. Looking for that elastic force, we can simplify our equation equals zero. We know the weight, just like before, 300 sine 60 degrees this time and the elastic force turns out to be about 260 newtons. And the last part of this problem says the spring is stretched 20 centimeters. Calculate the spring constant K. This is referring to Hooke's law, F equals negative K delta X, or K is equal to F over delta x. Notice that I've dropped that negative sign. That negative is just a reminder of directions. That force is always opposite of the stretch. The elastic force that we just found in part b, 260, and the stretch of 20 centimeters, or 0 0.20 meters. This turns out to be a k of 300, oh, 1300 newtons per meter. And those are the standard units of pi. This problem again focused on a ramp. We started by doing our free body diagram, remembering that we needed to tilt our axes and split up the force due to gravity into components. We then used the sum of the forces equals ma in both directions to solve for unknowns. And part C was a little reminder of Hooke's law.